Last video, we had a look at one of the new repository from Microsoft using OpenAI and Rack implemented on Azure, and it is called Chat With Your Data, the Solution Accelerator. Now, Microsoft has published quite a few different repositories for enterprise customers to, to achieve what they need. Starting from Azure OpenAI on your data, this should be the first option considered for developers. Then you're moving on to the Azure Machine Learning Prompt Flow, which I'm yet to make a video of. And last video, we talked about this Chat With Your Data Solution Accelerator, which you had the ability to upload your personal, your local files, as well as a public website. So unfortunately, it's not, a, not an internal, your SharePoint or other website that require authentication. It's just a public website. And today we're going back to the root, the very first, very first repository published by Microsoft on, under the tech context of uh, OpenAI and the RAG. That's called ChatGPT Enterprise Data. So I've made a video a couple months back when it just came out. A lot has been changed, a lot happened. Even the, the ACS, the Cognitive Search, has been renamed to a Azure AI Search now. So I'm going to go through this repository with you guys one more time, implement it, test it, see how it compares with the last demo we did, and see what's changed, what's different. So let's get started. So what is this repository about? So this repository will help you to create an app that is giving you a GPT, chat GPT-like experience over your own data by using a technique called the Retrieval Augmented Generation Pattern. It uses OpenAI model. You can use anything you want. In this um, example, it uses the GPT 3.5 Turbo. And Here's a couple of features that you will have. Foremost is obviously a chat GPT-like interface. It can also give you a citation if you move down here. It will give you a citation. And when you click on citation, it will take you to the original document that's relevant to your question as a reference which is very good. And here there's also a video you can watch. Um, I, I believe it's from Microsoft Mechanics to talk to you, to talk about this app. Now there are a couple of things we can do to set up the demo. Last time I did a local VS Code setup. That was a little bit complex, not, not super complex, but not easiest way. Today I'm just going to do the simplest way, which is using the GitHub code space. So I don't need to spin up any local environment. So I'm going to click on this, open the GitHub space, and wait for it to load. We are logged in. So I'm not going to change anything other than US East. That's the region I like to use and go create code space. Now this is going to take a uh, couple minutes and then we'll follow the instruction and continue on. The code space is ready. Now next thing we're going to do is run the AZ auth login to authenticate. So let's go to the code space and AZ auth login and enter. So we just follow the prompt and I've copied the code. I hit enter and open up a browser page for me. Let's paste the code and we will complete our authentication. Now we can close this window. Go back to the code space. Okay. And the next thing we need to do 
we're gonna follow this instruction deploying from scratch so click on that first command we need to do is az up so we do az up one simple command just gonna spin up the whole whole app based on the template super easy now it will ask you some questions first one is going to select your subscription click enter select region as always I like the East US so arrow up and go enter enter a value for the OpenAI resource group location infrastructure parameter now I don't remember this step in my previous video but let's just select is East US again go enter save the value yes enter and let's continue the deployment you can see it's almost done it's still processing but you can see the files the PDFs in the sample data folders being uploaded it's being processed the embeddings is probably been getting created so hopefully this won't take any longer finally after almost 20 minutes 22 minutes 46 seconds it has completed the deployment via the code space and you can see under my subscription ID for my Azure subscription has been deployed to a resource group called RG chat GPT enterprise data and this is the endpoint that supplies the um, web app so let's click on that go open now you should expect to see a very similar front end UI we saw in the last video basically is a Azure chat GPT like chat window first time running this it might take some time to load after another almost five minutes now we have the front end website loaded now this looks pretty much very similar to what we had six months ago with a little bit difference for example it has been renamed to AI search in the developer settings you can see now we are not only using the vectors search plus the text which is the keyword combining them they are called hybrid search we also have the semantic ranker options so pretty much this is the best you can get with Azure OpenAI compared to the app we've done with Langchain and other enterprise search product which is pure vector search with the power of Azure AI you can do vectors plus the keyword search which is hybrid search and on top of that you can enable semantic ranker to give you a better result than a pure similarity search and in terms of the data now this app does not have the ability to upload the data like we did on our last video with the uh, solutions accelerator which is powered by um, streamlit so it had a different admin user interface it also has a front end web app like this one now today's this repo is only loading the files under this data folder so it's a bit clunky if you want to replace with your own it doesn't have that user driven um, ability in the interface but let's just have a quick look how it works so let's say tell me about the health benefit for North Swing staff and it, similarly um, unfortunately we can't compare with the same map that was built six months ago but you answer the question it will give you answers plus the citation that you can click on so here you go so it gives you all the answers based on the data and also if you click on this citation it takes you exactly where the page is that has a relevant tech context and here you go so this is the original 
ChatGPT with your enterprise data app, but now improved with semantic ranker and vector search, you have all these four process, which I believe they had before, how the AI thinks about a question, and some support content. The most common question on this repo is how to replace data. So if we look at this customizing the URN data, let's click on this data ingestion guide. How can we index in documents to this chat app? As you can see from the structure of the repository of this app, there is a data folder. And under there, that's where you upload data. So it's very st static, very static. You can't, you don't have that beautiful interface that we had with the last solution accelerator. But this is how you do it. You're going to replace all these files. And you're going to run a script to trigger or just to restart the processing of the document. So if we have a read on this guide, how do we do that? There's a script under the script folder called the pre-docs.py, and it is responsible for both uploading and indexing documents. So this is exactly what we need to do. We need to upload the files to that folder, rerun this pre-docs.py, which will upload your files to Azure and process it, go through all the embedding Euro stuff, and then we can call the app and ask questions again. The script uses the following step to, to index documents. If it doesn't exist, you will create a new index in the Azure AI search. You will upload the files to the Azure blob. You will split to the chunking, and then you will upload chunk to the Azure AI search. If using the vectors, which is default, as you can see before it was checked, we're using both vectors and keyword search, as well as the semantic ranking, they're all being ticked as default. Compute embeddings and upload those alongside the text. So this is what the script does, and we will follow these steps to try some of our own files. To upload more PDF, put them in a data folder and then run this script. So before we replace the file and create a new index, I just want to show you what is there now. So if we go under our resource groups and look for the Azure Search Service, Let's open that. And you should see an existing index being created with the current, those Northwing health benefit files. So we go to indexes. There are the index. You can see there are 16 megabytes of files. There's no indexes created or data source. So it's being, must be taken care of by other part of the the app, but you can see there's an index here. And remember, it is 16 meg now. Now let's go replace our file. Back at code space, go to your data folder and delete all the existing files. So we're going to delete that. I'm going to drop in the same PDF file I used on the previous video, just the Apple Q1 2023. Let's see whether we can do that at the same time. So we're dropping to the data folder. Here we go. Files are replaced by this Apple PDF. Now once you've done that, you just need to run the scripts. We're gonna just use the bash. So let's go dot scripts and the pre doc prep doc. Dot sh. Go enter. Now don't try to go to the scripts folder to run it. I don't know why, but I'm having a weird problem. So just run it from, from this root folder. Okay. So let's see whether it actually been processed. So back at the web app, I have not refreshed the browser yet. Let's just try it. Can you tell me about 
Apple's earning. Now it, this might take a while, might take a while for it to process all documents, go through all the, the Azure factory. So let's just refresh this and go back to our Azure index. Now if we refresh this, we should see a new index. Okay, so this is our current one. Still got 16 meg. And we should see a different number here. Now we know the new file has been processed and we will be able to talk to ChatGPT. So it actually didn't work. Some of you might realize that when I ran this command, the bash command, it actually failed. With this label empty or too long, not sure whether it's crucial, but I don't think it worked. All these are like errors. So I ran the PowerShell version again. Just on this one, I ran the exact same script, not exact same command, but with PowerShell. Now this one looked worked because you can see all these processings and it's actually doing stuff. It did a chunking as well, uploaded the file. You can see the file uploaded and also it looked into the other folder which we left there under the GPT-4 vision and it says under that, no change detected. So that actually looked good. Let's switch gear to the Azure index. Let's refresh this. And hopefully we should see, here we go, the index worked and uh, it's a different file now. Now, what I found is it didn't actually delete the previous index, even though the files are not there. Even the files are not in your app, the indexes have already been created. So when I upload this file, it just added to the existing one. So you should be able to ask the questions um, about the Northwind file. So let's just try the new Apple earning. So can you tell me about uh, Apple's earning? And then let's ask another question. Okay, here we go. So that worked. And this is a citation to the file we just uploaded. And if we want to ask the question about the previous index, which the file we already removed, can you tell me about the healthcare plan for North Star? It should still be able to return the answers because even though the files are not, does, do not exist anymore in your app, the indexes have already been created. Okay, so it's a bit slow, but this is pretty much how you can replace the files with your own reprocess it and run your app. Next, I actually want to try this GPT-4 vision, which is added feature for the update. We didn't have this six months ago. So let's click on this enabling GPT-4 with vision and have a look. What do we need to do to have the added? Now we all know what GPT-4 vision is. It's going to be turn this app to a multimodal. Um, first, we need to create a computer vision account in Azure portal. So let's do that first. I'm not sure actually whether I have access to these models yet. So I'm going to select the same resource group. And then we're just going to call it GPT-4V. And 10 core per second. Um, let's just go for the free one. Maybe, not sure whether we can use the free one. Mm, let's just change the name real quick. Chat GP. ENT data. Okay, so free tier usually won't work. Actually, I'm just going to change this. We'll delete it quickly after we finish the demo. 
Well, let's create a computer vision account and see how we can integrate that into our chat app. So click on create. So the vision count is done. Next, you need to check whether you have access to GPT-4 Turbo with the vision model. I actually don't know, and I can't check it because remember I selected East US when we created this environment. I found it hilarious because when I look at this article, just now, GPT-4 with a vision, the open AI service resource must be in West US or Austrian East, which I was totally wrong. I always select East US. So hopefully we can fix this when we redeploy it. And the next thing we're going to do is make sure you have these models and um, AI vision. Not quite sure what that is, but Let's try following these steps. Okay, so step one, we're gonna set environment variable to set this as true. So we'll do AZD environment set. So we go to our code space, reload it. And remember all this will be taken down and re-spin up. So let me just get rid of all that and that. Now under the terminal, first thing is to set, so let's clear this. So we want to set, can't copy and paste, so we're going to do Set EMV. Let's hit enter and see whether it will work or that looked worked. Next, we're gonna take down the the environment and uh, do a fresh setup. So we just do a Z D down, and we wanna purge. U R G E purge, and that will clean our environment. And we're gonna do A Z D up again to set it up. Application has been removed, so let's A Z up and see what happens. Here we go. Here's the result. I was not able to change East US. So it failed. So I'm going to delete the whole resource group, restart the code space, and we'll do this all over again. So coming to my subscription, I'm gonna click on the resource group. I'm gonna delete this resource group. And when we set up again, this time we'll select West US. Okay, we are clear. Make sure under the AI services, you go to these manage deleted resources and purge them if they are still here. Otherwise, if you use the same template to deploy, you might run into error. Okay, so now that's all clear. Let's open the code space again. And this time we're gonna select, well, do not change it, US West is good. Let's go create code space and we will do the everything we did before again. First, we're going to do Azure Directory Auth Login. We'll copy that code. And go Enter. That will open a browser for you to authenticate. Paste that code. Next, and you will be in. So we can just close this window. Continue. Let's close this window now. And back in here. Now, before we run AZ up, what we're gonna do first is to do the computer visions. So see this bit here? We're gonna follow this one right now. Okay, so first one, let's create this computer vision count. And we will create a new resource group here. And we just use the same resource group. 
So let's call it chat ENT data. Call enter. Region will keep everything in the West US this time. Let's do US West. Well, West US. Name. Let's call it. Chat data. Let's call it chat ENT data. And the price tier. Let's go for the standards one. And I will go create. Computer vision account has been created. Now let's go to the code space and set the environment variable to use GPT-4 vision as true. Enter the new environment name. Let's call it GPT. 4v look that's it and we're gonna do the a z d up here you go make sure this time we'll select west us and let's give it 20 minutes 20 to 25 minutes the deployment is all done now this time when you come to the web app under the developer settings you can see this extra option says use GPT-4 turbo with the vision and you can select images and text from the index All right so let's close this we keep the rest of the options now let's have a look at our deployment so now we're going to test the files under the data and under the GPT-4 vision folder under the example here, there is a financial analysis report. Obviously, we can't really see anything here, but I have downloaded And let me show you what that file looks like. So this is the file under that GPT-4 vision example folder. The idea is, well, this file has not only the text, it has images, it has tabular data, graphs, and obviously, we expect the model will be able to um, read all that and we can get answers from it. So let's just pick something that is representative. For example, um, we can see, how about this? The global distribution market description. Distribution. Let's try that. So we go to our app and ask, tell me about... A global financial market distribution which I already did here and they give us some stuff back and looks like it's reading something and also it created a citation which pointed directly to the file this financial market analysis report if we look back here so we can see it's actually getting information from this um, but how about we replace with our own file and see whether it can actually uh, perform with the images. Here I've got another financial report from a mining company. Now all the financial report nowadays are like this. It doesn't have just text. It doesn't only have the text. It always have images, tablet data, graph. So the model needs to be able to read all that. All right, so let's just quickly replace it. Uh, we'll have to replace it. As let's just drop the files in to this GPT-4 example folder. Copy there, and we're gonna run our script again, the prep doc script to process and update the embeddings. So to make sure it works, if we go to our AI services, let's go to the search. That's already been created. This is the index. Go to the indexes. Right now we have 36 meg. 36 meg of the file. So we go to go back to uh, oh, detect the unusual line terminators. That's fine. Visual Studio detected that, but let's see whether our model can interpret that. Prep docs. 
PS1 and enter. So you can see it's extracting text from uh, using the Azure document intelligence. It's going through our document, the file. It's going through the images. What I'm not quite sure is whether it's actually using the GPT-4 vision models. If we do a quick search, vision, yeah, GPT-4, only our folders got GPT-4v. So we're not actually quite sure what it's doing. But while we're waiting, let me tell you, based on this guy, about the GPT-4, about the vision, computer vision we just did. So on this prerequisites, we want to create a computer vision account, which we did. And it says, so you can agree to the responsible AI and then you can delete the account. So that made me think I don't even need to have this. So you can see some I created before, the ECUS, that won't work. Uh, it's not this, actually. That's why we did the deployment again. It's then when you're doing the AZ up, you need to choose the right region, which is West US. This computer vision, I don't think it actually matters. I think I can safely dis delete this resource. So let's delete that. I'm going to delete the other one. And I'll tell you why I think that this doesn't matter. We are not actually using the computer visions here. What we use is the GPT-4 vision model from OpenAI, not under here. So if you go to the OpenAI Studio, which is right here, you can see now the new deployment has created GPT-4 vision model on top of the GPT-3.5 and the embedding model. So we know it's actually the app is using this, not the computer vision account. And that's why I think that can be deleted. And that's what it says here as well. It just wants you to accept the terms and conditions so you can delete the account after that. Anyway, so let's go back to our app. And uh, Okay, great. So no change detected in the north wing because we didn't remove those files this time. All right, let's see. Uh, quick search on the vision. Again, no vision, but let's just ask some questions about this new file I uploaded. How's the AKM's last financial result? And while we're waiting for the answers, I want to grab something from this file that it's clearly from an image and then no reference from elsewhere and see whether it actually used the vision model. So I need to be careful. If I pick something highlighted here uh, in the graph uh, or in the image like this, this data might be highlighted or might be repeated somewhere else in the text. So we wouldn't be we wouldn't know be for sure that it's actually use the data from the images. So I'm going to ask something weird. How about this? Let's ask a question on the plant. And while we're still waiting for that, let's ask, you know what, let's just refresh it. I'm not interested in this just damn data. Let's ask just regarding this image. I want to see whether the GPT-4 vision model is working. What can you... Okay, what does the plant look like? That would be an interesting question. Okay, so it says there's no information about the physical appearance of the plant. And the citation is on page 11. If we move back here, what page is this? This is tw 12. Okay, so this is... Okay. Right. So... It didn't... I don't think it actually processed this image. Where is 
Naraha plant located? Now, this is clearly text information here. So he referred to the content on the page. Right. So we know this file definitely has been ingested, but whether it is able to get all the information out of this graph, we are not sure. Now, let's say total profit for the period of period of 20 December 20 what is the for December 21 now again the data we're looking for it might be repeated somewhere else in the See, it's repeated somewhere else. So we don't know whether it actually is working. It's repeated multiple times, this figure, actually. All right, that is the right figure. Hmm, what about, let's try another image, but I don't think it's working. James Bay. What does James Bay look like? Now, again, so it found the information of the James Bay, but did I don't think it's, it saw the pictures. And if we have a look at our, so the vision count's gone, that's fine. If we have a look at our index, so go to the AI search. This should be updated by now. Go to indexes. This figure is different. Previously, were thirty something. So we know it's all working, but um, I don't think the GPT-4 vision. I'm not sure whether it's actually being used, because from here I cannot see any anything that's mentioning about GPT-4 vision and these images. Right? There's images here. What are they using? These images. They are using the Azure Document Intelligence, so I can't be sure. I can't be sure it is using GPT for visions. I just realized under developer settings, I did not save this GPT four Turbo with Vision. So let's see whether we can make a difference. Images and text from the indexes, great. Vectors, hybrid text images, okay. Right, let's close that, do a refresh, and make sure the settings is still saved. No, I can't get it saved. What am I missing? What am I missing? Yes, maybe I can't refresh it. So if I go here again, all right. So let's ask the question, what's the alcohol? James Bay. What does James Bay plant look like? And while we're waiting on the answers, come back to deployment. I ran the prep doc again, just hoping I can see any mention on GPT-4 vision model. No, these are just the photos. No mention of that. And again, the process of the file are mainly by done by the Azure Document Intelligence, whatever that is. So still waiting for the answers. Oh well, let's wrap up. Today we revisited the very first repo, Chat GPT with Enterprise Data. And we were able to replace the files with our own this time and also enable GPT-4 with the vision. Now, even though we are able to enable it from the front end, 
looks like it's not actually working. So if any of you can get that out, work it out, please leave a comment and share with us. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.